In this episode of At the Aga Khan Museum, a behind the scenes look at the staging of an exhibition. What is a superfan? And what does he have to do with the Aga Khan Museum? And a performance about longing and rain. Hello, and welcome to At the Aga Khan Museum. I'm Amir Ali Alibai. Earlier this year, we staged an exhibition about the power of the image and how it influences our thinking and our lives. It was a big success, but staging something so beautiful and immersive is no easy feat. It is an act of aesthetics and timing that must be executed perfectly. Although this exhibition has been two years in the making, it's these last few weeks leading up to opening day where it's all hands on deck. I'm headed down to the collections hall where alone objects are arriving from all over the world. So, you know, this is a really unique line of work that you're in. Yeah. Right? And yeah. so what, what inspired you to get into this? I think it's the excitement of seeing the objects arrive here safely and also be the first one to know what is included in the exhibition. Okay, so this just arrived today. And do objects show up this close to opening day? Sometimes we have pieces arrive maybe just one week before the exhibition opens. And most importantly, when the crates arrive, we need to acclimatize them for 24 hours before we can open it. So everything is in a very tight schedule. This is um, the piece from the Museum of Fine Art Houston. Can I take a peek? Of course. I can? Oh, no. You can just look at the outside of the crate, but you cannot I can't look the at the inside of the crate? I'm You're sorry. You're killing me here, Jessica. Yeah. Hi, Jessica. Hello. Hi, how are you? Hey, Ellie, how's it going? Hey, good, how are you? Good. So now, Ellie, with regards to security, walk us through the process. So our responsibility uh, really starts at the uh, arrival of this the artifacts and we also make sure the placement of these items don't uh, impede camera views and we just want to make sure that our loaned items are safe and we take care of them just as we would our own. Got it. Okay, so you're ensuring obviously safety for some safety foremost. of our visitors and definitely safety of the staff and occupants of the building. Perfect. Uh, now I know Haley, we have to go check out two objects. Yeah, two of the first objects are being installed. Okay, perfect. So lead the way. Hello. Ulrika. Hello again. Uh, hello. How are you doing? It's, it's pandemonium in here. It's, <laughs> yes. it's amazing. So this is one of the first cases that we're installing today, and we have two beautiful works from the Aga Khan Museum collection. Gloves on. <laughs> and when you're doing these installs, what are you looking for in particular? That's a good question. <laughs> I come up with good questions. <laughs> I don't have good answers usually. <laughs> we work really closely with Ulrika and the curatorial team to make sure that that vision comes to life. Sometimes it's a question of, are we centering them? Do you want them to be closer together, further apart? And then of course, making sure that it is a fully aesthetic experience for the visitor. Every single artwork has its own identity, its own soul, its own aura. Mm. So obviously if you clutter things up too much, right. then the visitor gets overwhelmed and does no longer appreciate the individual and unique impact that every single object has. We all know the power of social media to connect and share ideas. And that's where Chelsea comes in. She is the museum's marketing and social media officer. So what does this exhibition have to say about social media? When you walk through the exhibition, you're journeying through different cultures, you're traveling across the ages, and you're learning about how people have portrayed themselves through images. We're doing that at the same time on social media when you share a photo of yourself or when you share a photo of your food or when you share a photo of your pets. Like mm -hmm. what ideals are you are you portraying? What what are you saying about 
your identity? What are you saying about your status? Oh yeah, we've gone from majestic imagery to cat filters. Yeah. Like. And so this exhibition really shines a light on that journey and that progression. Exactly. I'm about to hop on a virtual call with one of the artists, Rashid Rana, to discuss his inspiration for the piece and get his reaction to the full installation for the first time. Hey, thank you, Ali. Uh, lovely to meet you and uh, e-meet you, I should say. Tell us a little bit about the inspiration for this work. The title of the piece is uh, Together Alone. And uh, as we have all noticed on the uh, social media, that most of these self depictions are solitary space uh, uh, representations with some indoor or outdoor kind of context. Uh, so I thought if I can accentuate this experience, what we see on social media and create a much bigger matrix through this work uh, where all these mirror selfies are present, but then each one is kind of contained within their own cell and hence they are uh, together and, and alone at the same time. And that's the dichotomy of social media. It's an opportunity for the viewers to knit the narrative between the two extremes, the micro and the macro. So you haven't seen the final installation yet. Obviously, this is your first time. So I'm going to step around and you should be able to. Oh, oh wow. Thank you so much, uh, Ali. It's been a year that we've been working on this project and all you see your screen. And no matter how big the screen is, it's not comparable to uh, the actual work. And I, trust me that whenever I see my work actually realized, printed and installed, even as an artist, there are some, some surprises for me. So thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. I've got a preview of my work. A little later in the show, we're going to see an exclusive performance inspired by friendship and a monsoon. You're about to meet one of the most popular people in Toronto, the home of the Aga Khan Museum. Nav Bhatia is one of two ambassadors for the city's basketball team, the Toronto Raptors. To give you a sense of the profile of that role, the other ambassador is rap superstar Drake. It may seem like an unusual role for a car dealer to hold until you meet him. Nav Bhatia, the superfan, represents not just the broad appeal of the Raptors, across all segments of the city, but have the values we hold here at the Aga Khan Museum. I had a chance to talk to Nav this summer when he visited the museum for the screening of a documentary about this fascinating man. Welcome, Nav. Thank you for having me here. Oh, it's great to see you. And, you know, I have to say that, I mean, first of all, watching the film that's just been released, Superfan, has been really exciting for me. And I've learned a lot about, about what you've done. Um, you know, and I realized that you are a super fan and the other person most associated with um, the Raptors who is a non-player is Drake. Yes. And then I a started- Rapper. Yeah, exactly, yes, a, a rapper. Yes, a rapper. And then I'm thinking that these two men of color have become you know, super fans and represent this team. What do you think that says? It's amazing, I tell you. That's so great because I became the super fan. I was made the super fan in 98, 99 by Isaiah Thomas, the, the president and the general manager at the time. And uh, Drake was uh, made the global ambassador. Actually, when I became the super fan, Drake was a young kid and uh, used to come to the games and uh, say hello to me and here he is now drake is super you know big magician brings rapper one of the best in the world and uh, he has uh, uh, become a big fan of the game of basketball and also the team and you know both of us we are just trying to do the same thing bringing the world together through the game of basketball he loves basketball i'm in love with basketball and we are bringing the people together through the game as far as I'm concerned, I think sports is a combination of arts and motion. Look at the emotion sports arises in you. Look at the emotions arts evokes in you. So to me, they are the same and both are bringing the people together. They say sports and music, sports and arts brings the humanity together. And it's so true. During the playoff, Canada be became one. I mean, on the parade, 
which I was blessed to be the Grand Marshal of the parade. This guy with the turban and beard, first of all, was a big thing to become a super fan because I'm not a black or white super fan as everybody will expect. So kudos to the Raptors for making and picking somebody who is not a you know, sort of a regular guy out of the crowd. They picked up a guy with a turban and beard who's different looking, but has still the same passion as anybody else. To the love of basketball, the love of sports. And during the playoffs, I think everybody became together in that, in that parade. 2.5 million people standing on the street and another 7 million people watching on the TV or digitally. I mean, that bring, brought Canada together. Nobody cared if he's uh, wearing a hijab or a turban or anything, a white, black, or a Muslim, or a Hindu, or a Ismaili, or a Jani. They were all cheering and celebrating the victory of their team and they were uh, celebrating the championship. That's a, th th that, what you're describing are really special moments when they happen for us as a community, as Canadians, and, you know, um, as people who share uh, interests together. And I think that that's, you know, a, a really powerful story that you're telling. And I'm wondering that, you know, you've been to the museum, the Aga Khan Museum, a few times, right? What does this place mean to you? This is a place I see here. I've come here a few times. Yeah. And I saw, I, and I come back again and again, and I see people coming of different colors, different faith, different gender. This museum is bringing people together. It's uniting the people. That's the strength of this place. Wow, you said that very beautifully, thank you. And I want to you know, also comment on a word you've said many times since we started speaking with one another, and you said the word love so many times. And I have to say that being with you now and also after seeing the film and learning more about who you are as a person, I think that this is what I'm feeling defines you, you know, this idea of love and, and ishq. And that's also another thing that connects the work that you do and are doing, and your team does. Yes. yes, in the foundation, what we do is Nabat is Superfan Foundation. That's what we're trying to do, you know. It's uh, bringing the people together, helping the needy ones. Doesn't matter who they are, what color they are, especially the young girls, because I definitely believe in my life that if you teach a, education is important for everywhere, every person. But if you teach a man, you teach a man. But if you teach a girl, you educate a girl, you're teaching your a village. And I believe in that. And that's what my other purpose in life, I feel, is to help the World Vision do that project of Rise Up of Daughters of India, building washrooms for the girls in the poorest and poorest area of India, where I have been. And I was moved by it, where I saw these 11-year-old girls, you know, dropping out of the school because there's no washroom. When the period starts, they, are, they, are, they, they drop out of the school because there's no washrooms. Before that age, they are going to the fields and the bushes behind the bushes to relieve themselves. So I said, I got to get involved in it. This is a crime for an 11-year-old girl to get married at the age of 12 and have a babies at the age of 13. It's a crime, babies having babies. And I decided at that time to help build washrooms. We have been able to build hundreds of washrooms and thousands of girls are continuing their education and I think their cycle of poverty is going to be changed once they finish their high school or some kind of a diploma and they will be able to take care of their family. And that's the time I realized that it's not the cancer the biggest disease. It's not the heart attack the big, big, biggest disease. It's not the diabetes. It's the poverty. Now this is amazing because, you know, this, this is the thing that really moved me about watching the film was, you know, this, when you go back to where you came from, uh, where you had your beginnings, and the contrast, the fact that you have moved, you know, across the world, built a new life against many odds and challenges. Mm -hmm. You've worked really hard to achieve this. and you choose to give back, not only to the community where you've, n now this is your home, but going back and not forgetting where you've come from. 
That's powerful. That's, you know, to me, a baby, a girl, five, six, seven year old, doesn't matter, she's a Muslim, she's a Hindu, she's a Punjabi, Sikh, whatever color they are, they are universal. They're kids for everybody. They're everybody's kids. So, and I, 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 I sort of worship my Almighty to keep on till my last breath to do that. And I tell you one thing, I've had a lot of speed bumps, but Almighty carried me through this very decently. And I give all the credits of where I am in my life today to the Almighty. And I think the rest of my life I'm dedicating to serve the human. I want to thank you. What a pleasure to meet you and to, to, to meet someone like you. So thank you. A big inspiration. Thank you very much. And thank you for having me in this so beautiful place, Aga Khan Museum. I've worshipped this place because it brings so many people together here. Thank you. In this very space, vocalist Samida Joglakar, percussionist Abbas Jan Muhammad, and string specialist Zishan Lalani dropped in for a special pocket performance. They performed a traditional song in a genre called Tumri. It's about friendship and longing, symbolized by the coming of the monsoon.
Thanks for watching at the Aga Khan Museum.